morning, Brother Mark. Also, thank you for for joining us this morning. Okay, so ngayon po at mga kapatid ay uh, let's go to the Bible. At ang ating topic ng umaga ay infiltration, the infiltration. Ako, malalaman po natin po mga kapatid, itong language po na ito is um, it is also a military term. And um, makikita po natin yung uh, ito po ay uh, very important natin makita. Although hindi po naman yan Bible term. But magikita po natin yung why infiltration and this infiltration is the subtle attack over the scripture. Okay, the subtle attack over the scripture. And uh, titingnan po natin po mga kapatid kung paano po nag-infiltrate ang jablo at ang kaaway po mga kapatid sa atin pong panahon na para i-destroy okay, ang salita ng Diyos. But we know they can't. But Uh, dahil po sa infiltration na ito, they have deceived many. Na-deceive po nila ang napakadaming tao. But uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, mga kapatid. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2 verse number 17. And uh, let me read this verse number 17. For we are not as many okay which corrupt the word of God. Okay? But as of sincerity, as of God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. So I'll, I'll, I'll use this verse as a jumping text para maintindihan po natin yung issue at hand. Now, I would like you to tell, I'd like to let you know that there is infiltration going on even among sa mga, uh, mga, ano po, mga kapatid, sa mga churches ngayon at nag-infiltrate po ang kaaway even gamit ang Biblia. Okay? So not only yung mga teachings na mali but even yung mga wordings at yung mga ano po mga kapatid ay mayroong nag-crept in ang kaaway na na caught up tayo unaware. Hindi natin namalayan that uh, na victimized tayo or na ano po tayo po mga kapatid na 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 anong tawag po nito na trap ang iba Amen So dito po natin tingnan kung, kung bakit marami ngayon ang napunta sa NIV bakit marami ngayon ang napunta sa mga ASV or sa mga modern version bakit nag-depart sila sa King James Bible iniwan nila ang King James Bible Amen Sabi ni Brother Dondon Preach on and shout on. Amen, Brother Dondon. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. By God's grace, Brother Dondon. By God's grace. Amen. So, uh, bakit ngayon napapunta na sa mga Greek and Hebrew instead uh, ang final authority supposedly dito po sa salita ng Diyos sa King James Bible, bakit nagkaroon ngayon ng shift of authority? And what's going on? So, meron pong subtle attack. Remember, the devil will always work in a subtle way, in a in a, ano po in a in a in a form of a cloak of ano po mga kapatid, godliness or righteousness. Pero po magikita po natin ay meron po siyang evil intention, meron po siyang policy of evil. Now, if you are listening and following us in our series on the battlefield of the mind, and uh, most of us here. Na, na, na nandito ngayon are following sa Battlefield of the Mind na series ko every Friday. Remember, nandun tayo sa Attack the Message. Okay, Attack the Message. This is the second part po dun sa Attack ng Message. Ang una natin diniscuss doon is yung how the devil attack the gospel na meron siyang policy of evil or plan of evil to destroy the word of God or to the, the gospel para sa mga sinners. So, kanya pong pinipervert ang ang salita ng ay ang ano po ang ibanghelyo. Ganun din na, nangyayari po dito sa atin po sa salita ng Diyos, meron ding mga nagpi-pervert. Okay? Meron din pong mga mga nagdi-destroy po mga kapatid. So, hindi ko na to i-discuss doon sa battlefield of the mind at ito po ay dito ko i-discuss kasi ang issue nito under po ng under po ng King James Bible 
So dito po natin so ma magikita. So just take note, no? Just take note. Isa to sa pag-attack the message. At ang inatake po una ang pinipervert ang ebanghelyo at ang pinipervert po mga kabatid ay ang salita ng Diyos. Let me read po mga kabatid Jeremiah chapter number 23, Jeremiah 23 and look at how God, okay? Meron po mga tao na nag-steal, nagnanakaw ng salita ng Diyos. At hindi mo na malayan, nagnanakaw ng salita ng Diyos. Okay? In verse number, chapter number 23, Jeremiah 23, verse number 30. May mga, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. So meron pong mga tao na nag, lalo na mga propeta, yung mga nag, so wala na tayong mga prophets ngayon, pero mayroong maraming nagpipreach ngayon. So meron pong mga tao na nag, nagnanakaw that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. So let's be very careful po mga kabatid, dahil meron po na mga masasamang mga ano po ngayon, na mga, mga masasamang ano po mga kabatid, na mga, mga tao or mga false teachers na They are there not to teach you and preach to you the word of God, but they are there to rob the word of God away from you. Okay? Alisin. And that's nothing new because the Bible said it, that there are those who steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Amen. And But rest assured, mga kapatid, God is against those prophets. Do you, you see? Our hatred, our anger, should be the same with the Lord. Kung ano against ng Panginoon, doon tayo against. So do not be adversarial or do not go against those who preach the Word of God, but be against those who steal the Word of God. Amen. Wala, wala sa, sometimes wala sa hulog ang atin pong, ang atin pong mga pagtingin sa, sa mga ano po mga kapatid, no? sa ganong situation. So we're against, we should be against those who steal the words and we should, we should without apology, preach against them, po mga kabatid. Because God is against them. Amen. At ano itong mga tao po nito? Look at, that, that's the, that's the ano po mga kabatid, that's the anger of the Lord para po sa mga, sa mga nagnanakaw. Because God, His word is, to God, His word is very important po mga kabatid. Now look at, Uh, what does the Bible says? Dito po sa next part. Ano sabi sa verse number 36? Let me read sa verse 36. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden, for ye have perverted, take note, for ye have perverted the words okay, of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. So they have perverted the words. Okay? So kaya po mga kapatid, you see, ang inatake po ng Jablo, it's not only the gospel, but kung saan natin makikita ang ibanghelyo. At doon po siya sa salita ng Diyos, unang umatake. Then kung makurap ang ang Bible, of course, makurap ang gospel. Ganun lang. Saan ba tayo? Ang Biblia, ang gospel is according to the scripture. But when the scripture will be corrupted, then makurap din po ang ibanghelyo po mga kapatid. Let's, let's take note of that. And uh, mga kabatid, at ito po, and there are many, there are who corrupt the word of God, there are those who steal the word of God, and there are those, mga kabatid, who perverted the word of God. But the problem is this. Dati, obvious, obvious na obvious po mga kabatid. Now, I'll, I'll tell you this. Yung mga NIV, mga ASV, yung mga NASV, na talagang lantaran sila, vocal na vocal sila, na ito yung new version, bagong ganito, at talagang ang, ang, ang ano nila, yung New King James, noong mga early 90s, I'm talking about 91, 92, 93, talagang, talagang ganun ang kanilang bintahan po mga kapatid sa market, yung mga Bibles na ito, na mga modern version, ay talagang pumalo, tumaas yung kanilang mga benta. Ang kanilang marketing, ay better sila sa King James. That's mar ang King James ay ay ano yon ay old English at lahat ng iyon so vocally po ginagawa po nila pero mga kapatid yung mga Bible believer na nagsulat po naglabas si Gail Ripplinger 
naglabas si ano po si ng book, naglabas si Douglas Topper ng book, naglabas si I think si William Grady or Bill Grady ng book patungkol sa King James Bible and nung naglabas po si ano po si lalo na yung kay ano lalo na kay kay Gil Ripplinger na New Age version na book po mga kapatid nung 1994 nung unang ni launch po yun po mga kapatid na na yugyug or na shaken na shaken po yung kampo ng mga modern version kasi di declare doon di ano no doon i have a book that in my library po mga kapatid And uh, you could read that if you have not read that book, uh, uh, the New Age version, okay? The New Age version. Uh, yun po yung title po ng book po mga kabalin. Sa din, uh, inexpose niya doon na lahat ng mga modern version nito are New Age version movement. At uh, that is a satanic ano um, movement na ginagawa at inexpose doon at doon na lalaman yung infiltration na ginagawa nila. So right after that, bumaba yung sales nila. Bang! Magsak po mga kapatid. Bumalik ang mga tao sa King James Bible. At pagkatapos yan mga kapatid, at after that subtlety, they, they are now creeping, creeping in. Hindi na sila masyado kasi na-expose. Eh. Pero ang Jablo, always, it is always been, okay, always been, okay, the, the, the trick and the work of the devil na ganun po mga kapatid. Okay? So hindi po one of the the best moves ng Jablo and very effective move is yung ano po mga kapatid is the work of counterfeit is to counterfeit and doon po siya nag-interpret uh, in, in inter infiltrate po mga kapatid by that counterfeit and you know ang counterfeit is most effective pag ito ay mayroon pong closely resemble It closely resemble to the genuine thing or to the real thing. How will I counterfeit money be effective if it looks like the real money? How will I counterfeit brand, mga kapatid, of of shoes or of of ano po of of clothes or whatever things? Pag ito po ay replica, as in gaya ng gaya, kuwang kuwah. Pero nevertheless, kahit ganon po siya kaparehas counterfeit pa rin yun. Amen. So that's always the work of the devil. Kaya nga sabi po niya po mga kapatid, and as the woman beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Amen. So he will beguile, he will deceive through his subtlety. And that issue, I discussed that sa, sa battlefield of the mind po mga kapatid. And dito natin, ma-expose in this infiltration of the scripture kung paano po nag-work ang jablo at kung paano po niya inaatake po ang salita ng Diyos. Paano niya ninanakaw ang salita ng Diyos, mga kapatid. Okay? At piniperver ang salita ng Diyos. And I'd like you I'd like you to take note on this, mga kapatid. And um and uh let's take note on this and ito pong infiltration ng scripture as what we can see. Okay? Uh But let me let me start dito po mga kapatid. Let's let's understand one thing that we should not fail to understand is that this is about battle for the truth. This is a battle for the truth. We're not talking of a flesh and blood fighting. But we are we're not talking about physical warfare, but we're talking about amen, a spiritual warfare. It's a battle for the truth. Battle over what is the truth and what the truth is, and we we have to understand that that this is you don't you don't use guns or you don't use your physical might, but it's about principles, it's about convictions, it's about oh what truth will stand, po mga kabadet. So it's the battle for the truth because there is an attack, ongoing attack against the truth, and this is now battle for the truth whether. Kung maging successful ang jablo sa pag-atake po nito, you will be deprived of the truth. Amen. And he will he will steal the truth away from you or he will pervert the truth. Amen. So that you will believe otherwise. Or other else. Kung mga kapatid, na makikita po natin. That's very important to take note. Na dapat natin makita ang mga bagay po na ito po mga kapatid. 
So now let's let's move on and let's look at this the battle for truth. Okay, the battle for truth. So under the topic po nito po mga kabataan para maintindihan natin yung real issue the battle for truth. So I'm 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 discussing first the introduction po ng ating infiltration po mga kabataan and. Uh, You have to take note on that. Amen. So, amen. We are told in the Bible that we have we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So, supposedly, we are to receive the truth. Okay, we are to receive the truth. Hindi po tayo dapat nagre-reject ng katutuhanan, but anong ginagawa natin sa truth? We are to receive the truth, po mga kabadet. Hindi po tayo adversarial din sa katotohanan, but tayo ay tinatanggap po natin ang katotohanan. Amen. So man is unfulfilled. I'd like you to understand that you are unfulfilled. You are not complete. Amen. Without the truth. And uh, ano bang truth? What is truth po mga kapatid? Na dapat nating makita. And bakit importante po ito? Nating tingnan po mga kabadid. Okay? Of course, depende po yun sa ating definition po mga kabadid kung what is truth at dyan po nakasalalay po ang ating pong understanding po dyan po mga kabadid. Okay? So, we are to receive the truth and we are not to fight against the truth and we have to build that up mga kabadid kasi we are unfulfilled without the truth because truth is truth regardless of the country truth is truth regardless of whether you believe it or not truth is truth regardless uh, if it's not the modern amen because truth is absolutely true amen so anong magagawa natin sa truth amen look at first samuel chapter number 12 first samuel chapter number 12 we can serve in truth When you receive the truth, instead maging adversarial tayo sa katotohanan, why don't we just serve in truth po mga kabadid? Look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 12. Let me read verse number 24. The Bible says in verse 24, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth. Amen. With all, uh, with, with all your heart po mga kabadid. So ang hirap naman, naglilingkod ka, pero you are not serving in truth. You are wasting your time mga kabadid. Look at Proverbs chapter number Proverbs chapter number 23. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 23 in verse number ano po mga kabadid? In verse number 23, the Bible says, "Buy the truth and sell it not." Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So ano magagawa natin for those who receive the truth? Let's buy the truth. I'm not saying na bayaran mo ng pera if it needs be Or ano yung ina-exchange mo para sa katotohanan? Buying is something you need to spend with. Amen. Because if truth entails expense, are you willing to pay? Amen. If truth is a treasure, are you willing, amen, to take it? Amen. In spite of giving up of something just to have the truth po, mga kapatid. Do you not know that you, you abandon so many things, mga kapatid? Amen. Just to have the truth. Amen. Is the truth worth buying? And sell it it not. Sell it not. Don't 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 uh, compromise it. Don't give it over. Amen. But keep it. Amen. As a treasure in your heart. Amen. Because truth is, mga kabatid, is very rare sa panahon po natin ngayon. And we need to to have that. Let's buy the truth, mga kabatid, and sell it it not, po, mga kabatid. Amen. So we, let let's take it that way. Na ganun po, ma magkikita po natin. Next, ano pa? Jeremiah chapter number, anong gagawin dapat natin sa truth, mga kapatid? Serve in truth, by the truth po, mga kapatid. Look at Jeremiah chapter number 5. Let me let me read Jeremiah chapter number 5 po, mga kapatid. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 5 verse number 1, run ye to and fro, okay? Sabi dito, the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in broad places thereof. If he can find a man thereby any executed judgment that seek it the truth, I will pardon it. You know what? What will you do with the truth? Seek the truth. Amen. 
seek the truth. Serve in the truth. Buy the truth. Then seek the truth po mga kapatid. Amen. You see that? Look at John chapter number 8. John chapter number 8 po mga kapatid. John chapter number 8. And this is how to receive the truth. When you receive the truth. Because you will be unfulfilled without the truth po mga kapatid. Amen. Look at ano po mga kapatid. Uh, John chapter number 8. The Bible says in John chapter number 8 verse number 31. Let me read verse number 31. Ano sabi po ng Bible? 8.31. And then Jesus, I then said Jesus to those, okay, to those Jews which believe on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciple indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Remember this, in our King James Bible, it says, the truth shall make you free. Hindi po set you free. While it is true, na ikaw ay napalaya sa katotohanan, but the most accurate na ano po, truth dyan is, the truth make you free. Are you listening? Sa modern version, set you free. Sa King James Bible, make you free. Hindi ka lang pinalaya, pero ginawa kang malaya, mga kabadid. Amen. The truth shall make you free. Amen. So, what is the next thing we did as we receive the truth, mga kabadid? We need to what? Know the truth. Amen. Know it po mga kabadid. Therefore mga kabadid, knowledge of the truth must therefore be possible. You can know the truth. Truth is knowable. Amen. It is knowable. You need to take note on that. Amen. Don't be ashamed of the truth. Preach the truth. As long as you know that you are preaching the truth mga kabadid. Amen. Have that. Receive the truth. Serve in the truth. Amen. Buy the truth. Seek the truth, then know the truth, po mga kapatid. And you know that God is the source of the truth. Amen. God is the source of the truth. There is nothing else. In Psalm 31, verse number 5, God the Father is truth. Amen. God the Father is truth. And ano po mga kapatid? John chapter number 4, verse 6, God the Son is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And in John 14, verse 17, God the Holy Ghost is truth. And He's called the Spirit of truth. And the Bible says, Amen. In John 17, 17, God's Word is truth. Amen. Those are sources of truth. Amen. His Word is truth. Amen. This is battle for the truth. Why there is infiltration? Because they, they want the truth man, to be removed, to be perverted. Or to be stolen, stolen away, po mga kabadid. They'd like to steal that word sa, sa mga tao, po mga kabadid, na nangangailangan ng katotohanan. Amen. But praise the Lord, in spite of the attack of this, God has promised to reveal the truth. Yes, He is the truth. Truth is a man. It's kaya sabi nun, the truth shall make you free. Ang pagkasabi sa John 8, If the Son of Man, Amen, had make you free, po mga kapatid, then you are free indeed. Verse 36, If the Son of Man therefore shall make you free, the truth shall make you free, Jesus Christ make you free, then ye are free indeed. Because truth is a man. It's not just an idea, but it is God Himself. It is His Word, po mga kapatid. Nakikita po natin. Amen. So, God promise that he is going to preserve his truth. Let's look at Psalm 100. Psalm 100 po mga kabatid. God promised that he will preserve his truth. That's why we could say mga kabatid, we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Look at Psalm 100. Psalm chapter 100 po mga kabatid. I'd like you to look at verse number 5. The Bible says in Psalm 100, In verse number five, it says here, The Lord is good, and His mercy is everlasting, and His truth, amen, endureth to all generations. You know what the Bible says? His truth endureth to all generations. So God promised to reveal the truth 
and His truth, mga kabated, to endure also to all generations. You, do you see that? When He reveal His truth, He see to it that every generation, amen, will have the available truth because He said His truth endureth, amen, to all generations. God will see to it that in every generation, there is His word and every generation that the truth is made available po mga kapatid. And praise the Lord. Praise God for that. Amen. E sabi, sabi mo, sabi doon mga kapatid, His word is true from the beginning. Amen. And every one of His righteous judgment endure it forever. Endure it to all generations. Amen. So, thank God in our generation, there is available truth. Amen. Thank God in our generation, there is a revealed truth. Amen. Although it's not that popular, truth right now is not popular. Although truth right now is not that common. Amen. Although there is that rarity po mga kapatid, but still we can find the truth and still we can know the truth. Amen. And praise the Lord. The Lord also providing opportunity for everyone still to know the truth. And we have it, mga kapatid. If there is available, then buy the truth, then seek the truth, then know the truth, mga kapatid. That is, that is our encouragement. Amen. Ang makikita po natin po, mga kapatid. Amen. So what else? Look at Proverbs chapter number 22. Proverbs chapter number 22 po, mga kapatid. And to be known with certainty, not only the truth will endure, not only there is an, a guarantee of truth in every generation, and it is available in our generation, but truth, mga kapatid, can be known with certainty. Not only you can know the truth, but you can know the truth with clarity and with certainty po, mga kapatid. Look at Proverbs chapter number 22. Proverbs chapter number 22. The Bible says in verse number 21, Proverbs 22, verse 21, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. So, sabi ng Bible po mga kapatid, that we can, He can make us know the certainty, the certainty of the words of truth. So, you could, you could, you could, uh, you could know the truth, amen, and you can be certain of it, that it is the truth, mga kapatid, so that you might know Okay, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. So there is the certainty. You could, it is, it can be known with certainty. And praise God because he promised that he's going to reveal the truth, mga kapatid. And of course, where can you find the truth? Amen. Where you can find in, in th this world, in the universe, where did, where did God place the truth? Amen. Where did God place the truth? Where did God record the truth? It is contained in the word of truth. It is contained in the scripture. And that is the scripture of truth. Amen. That is the word of truth. And you could find it to nowhere else but in this book. Amen. This is the only tangible thing that we have on this earth where we can find the truth. Amen. Where we can hold the truth and know the truth and believe the truth and seek the truth and buy the truth and be certain of the truth. And you could not find it from any other book or anywhere else in the world. You could only see that because God recorded it in his word. That's why John 17, 17, I said that earlier sa inyo. And sabi niya, sanctify them with thy truth. Ano yung truth? Thy word is truth. You see that? Thy word is truth. In 2 Thessalonians 2.13 po mga kapatid, makikita po natin that this truth, amen, that is, is known, it is available mga kapatid, by belief of the truth. By belief of the truth in the word of truth mga kapatid okay where could you find that look at 
Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter number ano po mga kapatid? 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. The Bible says in verse number 13, it says here po mga kapatid, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning, okay, from the beginning, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. In 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approval to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. The word of truth. Amen. We can rightly divide the word of truth. Because it's available. We have it. The words of truth. Mga kapatid. And we can study the truth today. Praise God. It is available for our study. It is available for our knowledge. It is available for our understanding. Po, mga kapatid. It is available for our practical living application. For our practical living. It is available to be a guide on how to know God and to worship God. And thank God we have that. But there is this great conflict over the truth. That's the problem. Because of the truth, there is a great conflict. And meron always na resistant sa truth. Meron always na mga, mga other side ng kampun po mga kapatid na ayaw ng truth. Magalit pag ma-preach ng truth. Or ma, ma, ano po mga kapatid, ma-expose. Pag ma-expose sila sa truth, they will see to it that the truth will be hindered po mga kapatid. So, over century from the beginning, there has always been conflict over the truth. So, there is conflict, that great conflict. Okay? That there's always that great okay conflict. Over the truth. Dapat makita po natin po mga kapatid na may mga ganong conflict over the truth. Amen. And ano po makikita po natin, oftentimes mga kapatid, we'll see that truth is often disregarded by men. Truth is often disregarded by men. At ayaw ng tao. That's why, kahit nga mga Kristiyano eh, uh, pag truth na pag-usapan, it irk them, it make them uncomfortable, it, it, once the truth will expose them, and truth hurts, mga kapatid. You don't have to hurt people with your words. Just preach the word of God and people will be hurt by the truth. They will be offended by the truth, po, mga kapatid. That's natural. Because the word of God is, is a sharper than to any, any two-edged sword. It can piercing asunder Amen. Piercing asunder unto the soul and spirit. The dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Mga kapatid. And even to the joints and marrows. And is the discerner of the truth and intents of the heart. Kahit verse lang ibigay mo, ma-offend ma ng tao. That's why, ah, sabi na, walang Bible-Bible. That's why they will attack the truth. They will remove the truth. Amen. Kasi, yun eh. At ganun po ang Ganun po ang attitude ngayon ng mga tao. So, truth is often disregarded by men. And I'd like you to understand that, mga kapatid, that truth is not popular today. Amen. But one thing we know, mga kapatid, amen, truth is not always popular. And, and what is popular po, mga kapatid, is not always true. And you, 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 should, you should understand that, that it is often disregarded. Not only the, for the unsaved, and that is real even sa mga saved, even sa mga professing Christians, mga kapatid, it's often disregarded. Disregarded, mga kapatid, in many ways. Disregarded in our reading, disregarded in our listening, disregarded in our living, disregarded in our guidance, in our wisdom, in our understanding, in our knowledge, in many ways. We often disregarded the truth. Disregard. We often disregard the truth po, mga kapatid. Makikita po natin. Look at Isaiah 59. Look at Isaiah 59 po, mga kapatid. And later, we will go on sa issue at hand po, mga kapatid. But I'd like to establish this lesson in infiltration po, mga kapatid. This would be a lengthy one, maybe. But uh, we'll, we'll take time. Amen. Pag-usapan po natin. 
Isaiah 59 po mga kapatid. Look at Isaiah 59 verse number 14. Okay? And 14. Verse number 59, 14 and 15. Ano sabi ng Bible? And the judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth afar off. I'd like you to take note. No? So, ngayari, no? Justice is turned away backward and justice a judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Verse 15, Yea, truth faileth. He that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and displeased him that there was no judgment. You know, ano nangyari sa truth? Truth, for truth is fallen in the street. So, you see, ano, what, ano yung nangyari? Ang truth ay nahuhulog lang sa street. Or nagkalat lang. Walang pumulot. Walang, walang ano po, pumansin. At ibig sabihin, ito yung availability ng truth. Pero para siyang umuulan lang ng katotohanan. Pero walang pumansin. Walang nag-take advantage. Walang kumuha. Yan yung problema. Often disregarded. At makikita po natin po mga kapatid, that that's how we do. And even sa atin po mga pulpits, even sa ating mga churches, ang pastor ay talagang lumalabas na lang ang salitang ugat dito, mga kapatid, but they're fallen. Truth was never taken. They just, just like those manas po mga kapatid na nahulog galing sa langit, but they just fall and they're rotten. And people don't appreciate it. Po, mga kapatid. People amen, never take advantage of it. And this is not just true to the unbelievers, but oftentimes, mga kapatid, truth is being disregarded even among the saved. And ilan lang ang pumulot, ilan lang ang naka-appreciate, but truth is fallen. It's fallen. Po, mga kapatid. The issue is not that God lacks in providing or giving men the opportunity to know the truth. The real issue po mga kapatid is that men never amen, take advantage of the provision of those truth. They just let them fall to the ground. They just let them fall to the ground. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's why ngayon, yun po nakikita po natin sa infiltration. You know, my reason kung bakit ang mga truth ay nahuhulog lang. At hindi pinapansin at ang mga kristyano ay walang gana nito. Because may naka-infiltrate na ideology, may naka-infiltrate na isang prinsipyo na hindi galing sa Diyos, pero galing sa kaaway at nakorrupt ang ating mga minds. So your minds be corrupted also from the simplicity of Christ. Ang target ng Jablo is the mind po mga kapatid. At nakorrupt po mga kapatid Amen. At ang kita po natin, wow. Ganito po ang nangyayari. Okay? So, bakit? So, i-discuss natin yung men be a reason behind of this. Amen. Apostasy. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter number 9. Look at Jeremiah chapter number 9. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter number 9, po mga kapatid, Like you to look at chapter number nine, okay, verse three and five, okay, Jeremiah chapter number nine, verses three and five. Let me read. The Bible says, "Puma kapatid, and they bend their tongues like their bow for their lights, but they are not valiant. Take note, they are not valiant, okay, for the truth upon the earth." For they proceed from evil to evil, and they not they know not me, saith the Lord. And look at verse number five. But I will deceive, and they will deceive everyone his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. Will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies, and weary themselves to commit what iniquity. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. Ano mangyayari sa mga tao ngayon? 
because because of this truth is often disregarded we disregarded it mga kapatid by just letting the truth fall in the streets and what else po mga kapatid verse number three we were not valiant for the truth men and christians right now are not valiant for the truth ang tapang natin sa mga 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 makumundong bagay ang tapang natin pag sa mga kantuhan ng mga mga bagay or mga mga panglaman or pang pang physical na mga bagay ang tapang ng mga tao pero pagdating sa katotohanan hindi makapag street preach. Amen. Hindi makapag salita. Alam ko bakit? We're not valiant for the truth. Kaya maraming mga tao komportable sa tracks lang. Kasi wala kang sasabihin eh. Because we're not valiant for the truth. Men men will not stand in the pulpit and they'll make some excuses because they're not valiant for the truth. That's our generation today. Pero pagdating sa other things, nako. Amen. But we need men right now. We need ladies right now who are valiant for the truth. Let's not join the bands of those who disregard the truth. That's why, sabi sa verse 5, and they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. And do you want people right now will just deceive you and they'll not speak the truth and they're, they're not they're not truthful in their preachings. They'll not speak the truth. Amen. When you are not valiant one day, when you are not valiant for the truth, amen, that means you will you are not willing to speak the truth. You'll be ashamed. And that's the problem with men right now. And pagdating sa mga physical na mga, we're not talking of the physical warfare here. We're talking of conflict over the truth. We're not talking of a, of a courageous in physical might. But we're talking of a courage in speaking the truth in love. Amen. We're talking about being valiant. Amen. Not to upheld this book and not be afraid and say this is the word of God. Amen. And that sin is sin. Amen. And hell is hot and eternity is long. And we have the truth in our hand and preach it. Amen. You preach it. And you know what preaching in the Bible is? You cry aloud, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Preach it. Amen. And you're not trying to be, to be arrogant when you do that because that's how preaching is done. Amen. Men right now, they're not anymore, they're, they're afraid to speak the truth. And they're saying, oh, baka ma, ma, ma ano pang masabi sa ganito. Mga kapatid, we are mouthpiece of God and we are preachers. We're not entertainers. We're Christians. And we are to be a vessel of truth. Amen. We don't self-pedal the truth. But we tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. Amen. And with that, po mga kabated, we live in a generation where we disregard and we're cowards. Cowards. You know, you you'd like you'd like to know people who are really brave. Let them speak the truth. Let them preach the truth. Ang bravery, po mga kabated, it's not it's not something on how. The, the manner ng iyong pagnanalita, it's not that. But it's the courage within in the inner man that you, you tell the truth in spite of the odds because this is what they need. This is what the people need. Oh, mga kapatid. The same time, mindful that you speak the truth in love because you have compassion, you have care, and you have a burden. That's why you need to speak it, to tell it like it is. Amen. So, yun yung problema. It's often disregarded. And we're not anymore, we're no longer valiant. Amen. For the truth. Look at Hosea. Look at Hosea. 
Ito po yung nagiging resulta po mga kapatid dahil po nahuhulog na lang ang salita ng Diyos at we disregarded yung mga opportunity na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. One day, we will arrive mga kapatid sa isang situation na ganito ang mangyayari. Look at Hosea chapter number 1. At chapter number 4. I'd like you to look at Hosea chapter number 4. And the Bible says in Hosea chapter number 4, And in verse number, ano po mga kapatid? One. Let me read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Wow. Look at verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. So, ano nangyayari? My people were destroyed because of lack of knowledge. You know, when you reject the truth, amen, magsiself-destruct na. Because that is the natural outcome always when a person will reject the truth. O mga kapatid. That is always the natural outcome. You think you are for the better, you will become for the worse, po mga kapatid. And no, nobody, and you don't have to destroy anybody. And anyone who will reject the truth will be destroyed. Amen. Will be destroyed. Because of lack of knowledge and all of this. But ano nangyayari? Because of our often disregarding the truth. Ano nangyayari po mga kapatid? We know this is talking about Israel. But I'd like you just to realize the application of this, the practical application. For the Lord had controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Mga kapatid, let's wake up. Amen. One day, the Lord will take away those men who are faithfully preaching the truth and telling the truth, amen, in your churches and to your family. One day the Lord will remove them because they'll not be forever. They'll not stay forever. But if you don't appreciate what God has provided you today, if you don't appreciate what God has given you today, po mga kapatid, there will come a time in our churches, in our family, amen, where truth is no longer available, where mercy is no longer available, and knowledge of God is no longer available. Because of often rejection, mga kapatid. And God will always shower bountiful blessings of His promised word through those people who appreciate the truth. And please, this is our admonition. Let's not fall on that infiltration in the mind and in the heart of every believer done by the devil towards our attitude over the scripture. We have an indifferent attitude toward the scripture, towards the men of God, toward the preachers of the truth. We have now a different concept and different ideas and different uh, principle po mga kapatid. Then you thought that they're, when they preach the truth to you, you thought that they're hateful, that they're angry, that they're, they're challenging you. Amen. It's God mga kapatid. And one day, We keep on rejecting the truth as a family, as a church. Amen. You will find the truth somewhere else and you could no longer find that. Because God gave you over. God gave you, amen, in that, in that situation. Sige, gusto mo pala, ayaw mo salita ng Diyos. Okay. I will remove revelation. I will remove revelation. Amen. From you. May ganun po. Do you not know na dumating ang panahon sa bansang Israel na nagkaroon sila ng famine, not of bread, not of water, but famine in the word of God. O mga kapatid. That's, I think that's also Hosea, o mga kapatid. Nagkaroon po sila ng famine ng word of God. Amen. So kaya, hindi po, hindi po natin pwedeng anuhin po mga kapatid na Baliwalain, i-disregard ang mga katotohanan ito. We should be lovers of the truth. Amen! 
We should be those people. If you have the Spirit of God, amen. We should be those people who love the truth and who love those men, good men who preach the truth. Should not be. You should be lovers of good men. Amen. And that's the thing. Not only truth is often disregarded, but also, mga kapatid, truth is often, okay, truth is often negated. Not only disregarded, disregard, but negated by conflicting authorities. Nababaling po ang katotohanan at it, nagkaroon po ng shift. Amen. Meron po mga conflicting authorities, may nag-arise po mga kapatid, at they are trying to remove the final authority. And that's the Bible po mga kapatid. And they, they try to change the truth. Amen. They try, try to not only change the truth, but they try to replace the truth with their own authorities, with their own words po mga kapatid. May mga movement na ganyan po mga kapatid. And truth is often not only disregarded, but truth is often negated by conflicting authorities. Ano sabi po ng Bible? Romans chapter number one. Romans chapter number one. Because they, 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 it irked them out, yung truth po mga kapatid, they come to the point po mga kapatid, because every time they will hear the truth, it will put them in an, in, in a, it would make them discomfort. Okay? In a discomfort situation. Look at this. Romans 1.25. Anong ginagawa nila? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So they will change the truth of God into a lie. Into a lie. That's a problem. May mga taong ganun dahil ayaw nila ng truth. So palitan nila yung katotohanan. They always corrupt the truth. And they always, ano po mga kapatid, use the truth deceitfully. And, amen. So ano yung mga authorities makita natin? And of course, there's no other authority and final authority, mga kapatid. But apart from the word of God, and that is the word of God, the only God-given authority. And, Bakit may authority ang Father? Because it's given by the Word of God. Amen. May authority ang ating mga officials because it is coming from the Word of God. And that's the source of authority. The only God-given authority is His Word. And that is the truth. And the Word of God determines what is the truth. It defines what is the truth. So anong ginagawa ng mga tao to oppose this? Or so that they could negate the truth po mga kapatid. Anong ginagawa ng mga tao? They, they establish some authorities and they call it authorities just to negate the truth. To shift from the truth of the word of God amen to, to these things. What are those? Number one, tradition. Tradition. Ano ang tradition? Mga kapatid. Ano yung tradition? Ano yung conflict? Bakit may conflict over the truth? Dahil po mga kapatid, meron po mga tao na gumagawa po na ngayon ng mga ano, conflicting ideas. And that is number one, tradition. Magkikita po natin. Amen. Ano ang tradition? The authority of man's long time practice. So dahil matagal na tayong nag-practice ng ganito, Dahil matagal na natin ginagawa to, it must be right. It must be correct. So, ang nag-put old po yun is a long-held practice. So, that therefore, traditional determines what is truth. So, supposedly from the word of God, which is the truth, na ibaling na papunta sa tradition, yun na ang nagiging truth nila. Ah, ito na yung nakasanayan natin. It's a long-held practice. Pre-practice ng ating mga lolo, sa mga lolo, sa mga lolo. Up to ngayon, atin ang ginagawa. So it must be true. It must be true. It must be real. And that's a very poor source. Amen. Of truth po mga kapatid. At yun po ang nangyayari sa mga tao po mga kapatid. Pinalitan po ang salita ng Diyos. Mga kapatid, 
kung ang lay, kahit nag-umpisa pa yan sa beginning ng mundo at up to sa end ng mundo, it will always be a lie. Amen. Because that, uh, amen, the lie will not change. That lie will not change over time. And time will not make a lie to become true and develop into truth. Ano yan? Evolution? Na ang lie dati, ngayon totoo? Hindi po pwede. Amen. Kahit matagal na, 100 years na yung practice na yan, 200 years na practice na yan, Amen. If it's not true, it will never be true. Amen. The theory of evolution. It was started in 1800, late 1800. It corresponds also alongside with the modern version. Po mga kapatid. So kahit anong mangyayari, it will never be true. Magtagal na lang na magtagal po yun mga kapatid. Hindi po yun. Could not change the fact. Kaya anong sabi ng Colossians 2.8? Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Amen. And vain deceit. After the traditions of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. Amen. Not after Christ. Do you see that? That's the authority of man's long time practice. A long held practice. It put hold on the society. And natanggap na lang dahil naipasa ng naipasa ng naipasa. So ano nangyayari? You will know that napakadaming churches ngayon and family ngayon run by traditions rather than by the Word of God. Amen. Run by tradition rather than God's Word. Operated by tradition. Naniwala kasi hindi na may, may ang, ang, even ang tradition ay mas mataas pa sa Word of God. May mga simbahang ganun po mga kapatid. Marami sila. That, that is a conflicting authority. Over the truth, po, mga kapatid. Look at, uh, let me read Matthew chapter number 15. Amen. This is Jesus Christ. Ito po ang context po nito ay talagang nireprove ni Jesus Christ ang mga traditions ng mga scribes at Pharisees. But I'd like you to take note na lang sa verse number 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Sabi ni Jesus Christ, why do you transgress the commandments of God? Bakit mo na hindi na keep o na violate yung commandment of God by your tradition? You see that? Ang dami nating violations sa word of God dahil sa mga traditional natin na mga practices, na mga beliefs na iwala naman sa Biblia, binabangga naman ng Biblia or pinoconflict naman sa Biblia po mga kapatid. Pero sinusunod pa rin natin. That's, that's, that's how powerful tradition is. Sometimes men will choose tradition over the word of God. Amen. So ano sabi pa ng Bible po mga kapatid? Look at verse number 6. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. And sabi niya, thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tra tra tradition. Not only the tradition would cause the word of God, uh, that they transgress the word of God, but the word of God is made of none effect by your tradition. That's a problem. So many times, mga kapatid, sa ating pamumuhay, ng salita ng Diyos, walang, supposedly, ang salita ng Diyos is effectually work it in them that believe. They effectually work in them that believe. Did you see that? Kaya lang na immobilize yung kapangyarihan ng salita ng Diyos dahil ang power ng salita ng Diyos will only work pag ikaw ay mananampalataya or maniwala sa sa, sa ano po sa sa truth pero pag ikaw ay baliwalain mo yon at gagawa ka pa hindi lang i-disregard gagawa ka pa ng isa pang sarili mong source of authority ibabangga mo pa sa salita ng Diyos ano nangyari the word of god is made of non effect by our tradition but hindi ka man mga kabatid mga traditional na awal ang church ni naman siguro na hindi naman siguro nag pa-practice ng tradition or nag-preach in tradition. Pero meron tayong mga personal tradition na namanan natin, nagkaugalian po natin na hindi natin ang malaya na ito ay nagiging final authority natin or nasunod natin at ang salita ng Diyos could not effectually work because of them. And be, be careful. These are subtle. Do you not know that this is a subtle attack over the scripture? Tradition. 
Ito yung nag-crept in. Ito yung nag-infiltrate. Pumapasok sa atin na hindi natin napansin po mga kabatid that it becomes our final authority. You see that? These are what we call the conflict over the truth. And challenge. the Bible is challenged by the tradition. And the Bible, the authority of the Bible is replaced by tradition. And that is the problem. Look at verse 9. The Bible says, But in vain do they worship me, teaching for the commandments, I, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men. You know what is tradition? It's a commandment of men. That is a commandment of men. And you know, that's why po mga kabatid, it's really a subtle attack. And, and na, madami po tayong mga hindi pa natin nabitawan ng mga tradisyon and it made the it, it we we transgress the word of god because of it and it made the word of god without none effect because of it and we we exalted the the doctrines of men above the commandments of men above the commandments of god Woo! Mga kapatid, you have to take note of that and what else not only tradition ano yung mga conflicting authorities concerning the truth mga kapatid okay what is this great conflict, okay, over the truth, and that negated us, that shifted us, doon sa, ano, these are the, ano po, conflicting authorities. Ito pong number one, tradition, and next is philosophy, okay? Next is philosophy. Kita po natin. Philosophy. Amen. What is the philosophy? That is the authority of man's wisdom. The authority, the authority of man's wisdom. So pag sinabi nitong tradition, that is man's commandment. Pag sinabi natin philosophy, that is man's wisdom. And that is yung, ano yung greatest wisdom? At yun po ang kanilang ginagawa po mga kapatid. So, uh, ito po ay tumatayo okay, sa mga intelligence ng tao, tumatayo po sa mga philosophy ng tao, sa mga prinsipyo ng tao, at hindi po sa salita ng Diyos. And that is philosophy. The word philosophy is a compound word of two Greek words po mga kapatid, of phileo and sophia. Okay, Phileo and Sophia. That's why it's philosophy. It's a transliterated, compounded, and it, in English is philosophy. So, the word Phileo, the, where we get ano po, love. That's the word love. The Greek word for love, po mga kapatid. And Sophia, po mga kapatid, where we get the word wisdom. So, when you put them together, that is love for wisdom. Love for wisdom. But this wisdom po mga kapatid is man's wisdom. And many times na sinasabi po ng Biblia itong man's wisdom po na ito. I, that your, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God. That is it. Amen. If you take note on that. And uh, sometimes Meron tayong mga personal na mga philosophy. And we don't regard the word of God because we know well, we know better. Sometimes mga kapatid, may mga kayabangan tayo. Sometimes we trusted too much in our experience, too much on on what we have gotten from this world, po mga kapatid, and we we believe them over the word of God. Amen. Man's wisdom teacher Remember, even in pag-aaral sa salita ng Diyos, you will apply man's wisdom. Amen. How will the Holy Ghost teach it? Not as man's wisdom teach it, but by, as the Holy Ghost teach it, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So, may mga philosophy po mga, ngayon mga kabadid. Madami pong subject ng philosophy, but this is built upon humanistic, okay? Humanistic philosophy. That is built on the reason of men. And you, they think that they are wise, mga kapatid. You know, when, when was philosophy started? 
It started back from the beginning. When, when God gave them the wisdom of God in Romans chapter number 1 and God showed the wisdom of God in creation, pagdating sa verse number 21, when they knew God, and when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Then later on, professing themselves to be wise, then they became fools. You know, professing themselves to be wise. But in comparison, you think you're wise? You think you're intelligent? Amen. You think you're intelligent? But when you compare that wisdom, the accumulate the wisdom of this world, compare that to the word of God. Amen. You will look like a foolish man and you will be foolish. You know, the smartest man in this world, the intelligent man in this world, the so-called intelligent man in this world, these are what? ang mga scientists, ang mga matatalino as a standard ng tao. They're atheists. Pagdating sa brilliance ng mga men's wisdom, talagang ang dami nilang nasusulat at nasasabi. Pero in the viewpoint of God, they are a fool. In the viewpoint of the Bible, they are a fool. Are you listening? Magkikita po natin po mga kapatid, that's why the Bible says, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. So they denied God. They changed the truth of God into a lie. So this philosophy, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. This is a subtle attack. This philosophy is creeping in in our families. This philosophy is creeping in in our churches. This philosophy is creeping in, mga kabaday, in our daily lives and in personal walk. I never thought that that is an infiltration. We have been infiltrated by tradition. We have been infiltrated by philosophy. O mga kabaday. That's a, that's a problem po. Makikita po natin. And you have to acknowledge that and you have to look at that way po, mga kabaday. Amen. So, be careful. Be careful. And may mga taong ganun po. Let's look at Acts 17. Tingnan mo natin sa Acts 17. Acts 17 at meron pong ang mga Greeks because the Greek seek after wisdom. At ang mga Hudyo naman, they seek after sign. They require a sign. For the Jew, require a sign. But the Greeks seek after wisdom. So, saan po naupisan yung Mga Greek na ito. Mga Greek philosophers sila. Sila ano po mga kapatid? Sila Homer. Then later on, mga kapatid, makikita mo sila. Sila Plato, sila Aristotle, mga kapatid. Sila Socrates. Who are these? These are mga Greek philosophers. At ito silang, they are long held. Tinataas sila ng mga Greek mga kapatid. Na mga people. Na sila yung mga brightest, smartest. Sila yung nagkukos ng mga wisdom. Kinukuha nila doon sa mga tao nila. Sila yung nagiging source ng Nang, nang wisdom sa mga tao po na yon po mga kapatid for up to this very moment up to now mga kapatid they are still ano, inahawakan pa rin yung mga thoughts nila yung mga intelligence nila doon pa rin nagre-rely ang napakaraming mga tao Amen because that's us and let's observe that look at Acts 17 the Bible says in Acts 17 mga kapatid and Look at verse 18. Okay? In verse 18, and sabi, And certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics, ito yung mga kumbaga, mga, mga genius at mga, mga ano po mga kapatid, mga smart people kuno sa time nila. Epicureans and mga Stoics, ito yung grupo ng mga philosophers Pero of course, they, they practice witchcraft on the other hand, lalo na yung mga stoics encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? And some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange God because he preached unto them Jesus and resurrection. Dahil po, dahil po ano sila, dahil si Paul nagpipreach ng Panginoong Jesus, dumating kunyari yung mga, mga 
mga intelligent people nila. Oy, sino ba 'tong mga babbler nito? Ano ba mga sinasabi nila? Ganun po sila ka katikalon, mga kapatid. Look at verse 16. And while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now look at verse by the way, idolatry is based on man's philosophy. Okay? Look at verse number 22. The Bible says, nung siya po ay nag-ano po sa verse 22, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, nung nakita po niya, and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Verse 23, For as I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with an inscription to the unknown God, whom uh, therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declared I unto you. Can you imagine? They have been they have been playing about wisdom and superstition, but they are ignorant about the one true God. Mga kapatid. Okay? And ito po ang nangyayari. Makikita po natin na ang desire po nila, look at sa mga, mga philosophers na ito. In verse number, ano po mga kapatid? Verse number 19. And they took him and brought him unto Ariupago, saying, May we know what this new doctrine where thou speakest is? Verse 21. For all the Athenians and strangers which were spent, which, which, were, which were there, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new things. So wala silang ibang ginagawa, kundi to hear or to tell new things. Pero ang problema, saan sila kumukuha po ng mga wisdom? Saan sila kumukuha ng mga idea or ideology? Kumukuha po sila mga kapatid sa sarili nila. Pumuhugot sila sa sarili nila. So that is the authority when it comes to philosophy, that is the authority of man's wisdom. And saan po nakatayo ang atin pong authority? Saan po nakatayo ang ating faith? That's why po mga kapatid, we don't use formality, we don't use yung mga mga orator na talagang ganito pagsabi, dahan-dahan, ganito, ganyan, because we don't want, mga kapatid, we don't want that our faith should stand in the wisdom of men, but it should be in demonstration of the Spirit and of power po mga kapatid. It's philosophy. We could tell a lot, lot of things with that po mga kapatid. But philosophy according to Colossians 2.8. Ang Bible, sabi po ng Bible, no, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Do you understand what philosophy, real philosophy is? Philosophy is what? Vain deceit. Pag sinabi mong vain deceit po mga kapatid, deceit is not true. It's just a trick. It's just ano po, a lie. But vain. So ano yung vain? Empty. So you think they are philosophical. You think they are smart. You think they are intelligent. You think they are... Kasi dahil sa mga ginagamit po nila mga approaches, but in God's viewpoint, they are empty deceit. Are you listening? They are empty deceit po mga kapatid. That's the problem. They're not actually something na ano, na but just an empty deceit. Kita po natin. And, but they, they, they appear to be smart. Amen. And This philosophy is always contrary to the word of God. This humanistic philosophy, this, ano po, may, may time na dumating yung age of reason. Sa Victorian age, nung saan nagiging rampant ang education, and they call it the age of reason. Pero do na develop ang theory of evolution, humanistic philosophy, po mga kapatid. Psychology, doon po nag-uumpisa. Ang mga subjects po na yun. They call it the age of reason. Pero anong 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 na benefit? Anong na papala nila? Kina counterfeit nila ang word of God or tina kina conflict or tina tapatan ko nila. But this one philosophy is hello slowly creeping in sa atin po mga houses. What else po mga kapit? Ano pa? Science. Okay. Science falsely so called. Ano pa tong mga ano na ito? Mga mga conflict over 
over truth? Ano itong mga conflicting authorities? Science. Ano po ang science? The authority of observable facts and repeatable physic physical laws. So, kumbaga yung mga observable facts, kung ano lang yung nakita po mga kapatid, or even yung mga repeatable physical laws, yung mga laws of, na makikita mo, so they call it science. Pero ang tawag sa Bible is science falsely so-called. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng science? The word science means knowledge. It means simply knowledge. But they said, they make it science because they said it, that itong science falsely so-called, it's a, ito yung basis the, of, of true knowledge. That's why they define science as a body of knowledge based on facts and experiments. So it can only be proven as truth kung na, 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 na base po yun sa facts at na base po yun by experimentation po mga kapatid. If it's seen, if it's touched, if it's smell, if it's observable. So that, that is how they do it. So the basis of, of, of it is based on facts and what? Experiments. Now, if you could not experiment on something, it could not be fact. If you could not see on something, it could not be fact. Now, it will go contrary to the nature of the Bible. You know why? Because we believe in a God whom we have not seen, yet they're real po mga kapatid. That's why they will say po mga kapatid, anything that you could not touch, you smell, or hear, is not true. It's not fact. So, yun po yung authority na yun. And you know, mga kapatid, there are so many unseen things that they are even truer. Oh, I'll say the word loosely. They are even tru truer or mas totoo pa okay, than the things we have seen. And the Bible says po, mga kapatid, while we look not for the things which are, not, which are seen, but the things which are not seen. So ano ang tinitingnan natin? The things which are not seen. So that is the Bible po mga kapatid. As Christians, ang tinitingnan po natin, the things which are not seen. Oh, because why? For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are what? Eternal. So ano yung pursuit natin? Ano yung tinitingnan natin po mga kapatid? May mga bagay that they are even truer than the things we have seen. Why? For the things that are seen are temporal. So all the things that you see right now, they will gone. But the things, the spiritual things that we have, they will last forever. They are even durable. Amen. Far more durable because these things, amen, are not temporal, but they are eternal. So that in itself, nga kapatid, kung yun ang authority mo, maniwala ka lang sa isang bagay, na nakita mo na ano mo wala ka you will end up not believing god because you have not seen god you will end up not believing hell you will not you will end up not believing jesus christ you will end up not believing the word of god and you will call the word of god as fictional because ganun po ang mangyayari no mga kapatid that's the thing and first timothy 6:20 science falsely so called and anong sabi ng bible avoid science avoiding okay science the opposition of science let's go there ang paggagamit po ay the opposition of science falsely so called you see that this science itong science na i'm not talking about true science let me let me qualify true science pag sinabi mong true science true science will always be consistent to the word of god True science will always be consistent to the Word of God. But yung science na sinasabi na falsely so-called, na sinasabi ng 1 Timothy, that is science on humanistic science, on that science that's built upon on evolution, and science that's built upon to go against God, or science that is anti-God. Look at 1 Timothy chapter number 6. Amen. Look at 1 Timothy chapter number 6. The Bible says in verse 20 po mga kapatid, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain bubblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. So this science is designed to what? To oppose. Tradition is designed to oppose. Philosophy is designed to oppose. Oppose what? Oppose the truth. Oppose the word of God po mga kapatid. Then they are called, ang paggagamit sa Bible, falsely so-called why why do you call it science when it is not when it denies god 
Real knowledge is this book. Real understanding is this book. Real facts are in this book, po mga kapatid. Amen. I may not see, I believe in the Savior whom I have not seen. I believe in the place where whom I have not been. In a place where I have not been. Amen. And I believe in. Why? Because pag the things are spiritual things, Amen. It can only be seen by the eye of faith. It can only be seen by the eye of faith. And faith is a substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. Yet it is true. Amen. Having not seen, yet we love. Amen. And rejoice. Amen. With joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's the thing. So that's what happened today. And the science, the science. Next, science will tell you millions of millions of millions of years ago. Pero sa toto hindi naman. Ano pang conflicting authority? Scholarship. Okay, scholarship. These are scholarship po mga kabatid. Ano po ang authority? The authority of academic learning. The authority of academic learning and agreed upon knowledge. Pag sinabi mo academic learning dahil naging educated nga ang tao, ang ginagamit po niya kung anong nakukuha niya from the universities at pag-approach niya sa Bible, oh, ang kanya pong humanistic na mga philosophies na nakukuha doon, yun ang nagiging final authority niya. Pag sinabi mo, pag sinabi mo doon sa ano po mga kabatid, sa philosophy, yung mga leader, yung mga philosopher ang nagiging authority mo. Ang wisdom nila naging authority mo. Pag sinabi mong scholarship, yung sarili mong academic achievement, sarili mong accomplishment, and you take pride of it, and you you try now start to judge the Bible, to have mistakes, to look at the Bible as something na ano po mga kabatid, na kulang, na hindi perfecto, yun po mga kabatid. And ano yung mga agreed knowledge, yun po yung, yung pinapato, ah, ano yun, pinapano po nila. Yung scholarship. Look at 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 7. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 7. Well, it tells us po mga kapatid, ever learning, but never been able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, aral ka ng aral ng aral ng aral, pero hindi naman na-attain yung knowledge of the truth. And look at Isaiah chapter number 29 po mga kapatid. No, no, don't need to go there na lang po. That was precept must be upon precept, line upon line, all of them. No? Ever learning, but never been able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Professing themselves to be wise, and they became fools. Amen. Sometimes, oh, I have knowledge of Greek and Hebrew. That is scholarship. And you know, one of the enemies of the Bible is scholarship, and because they will not take the Bible as their final authority. They take the Bible. I. Uh, they, they take the uh, their authority. Final authority is their thinking. It is their thinking. It is their opinion. It is their view. Wala tayong magagawa dyan. Amen. So that's scholarship. And next is, okay, next is pragmatism. Okay, pragmatism po mga kabado. Do you know, do you know of people that are pragmatics? Pragmatism. Ano po ang pragmatism po mga kapatid? Ano po ang authority ng mga pragmatic people po mga kapatid? The authority of what brings the desired results. The, the, the pragmatic people, are, they are, uh, their authority is ano yung mga resulta? At yun po yung kanilang authority. So ano, po, ano ba ang mentality ng mga pragmatic na mga tao? Anything that works is truth. Anything that works is truth. Yan po ang, ano, they are what we call the result-oriented. Anything that works, yun yun. Yun yun totoo. So they are looking at the desired results. Ang yung outcome ng isang bagay. Eh, that, that is very dangerous, yung mga pragmatism. You know why? Because ang, ang deceit mga kabatid or ang pag, ang pag ano po, yung mga pag-deceive ng tao ay effective. Yung pagbigay ng tao, very effective. So kung ang, ang, ang pamamaraan mo ay magbibigayl para sa'yo, any, any ways na that will 
that will work then that is truth ako na kadelikado po mga kapatid effectual they're looking at that pwede kang o oh, ano ang style nila o oh, 1000 ang ating members oh you see kahit repeat after me 1 2 3 repeat after me ang ating soul winning nadagdagan naman ng madaming tao si dapat ito ang tama one time po mga kapatid i was i talked to ano po isang preacher and i i shared to him something So word of God in 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 meekness by the grace of God and I told him pastor uh, ito yung sabi ng bible with regard sa isang matter it's isang bagay na ganito and uh, oh kita mo papakita ko sa iyo yung verse and it's up to you how you take it ang sabi sa akin do you mean to tell me Brad hindi hindi na ako magsabi ng pastor ha? sabi niya sa akin do you mean to tell me Brad na mali si pastor ganito at mali si pastor na ganyan kasi yun ang pinaniwalaan nila. Ibig mong sabihin, mali sila. Eh paano yun? Ang lalaki ng mga ang lalaki ng mga ministry nila, ang lalaki ng offerings nila, ang lalaki ng buildings nila, ang lalaki ng mga work uh, work nila, ministries nila. Do you mean to tell me mali sila? Na, nakuha mo yung mentality ng tao nun? Christian yun, pastor yun, pero he he, he is pragmatic. The basis of of his truth now is yung results. Hello, results. Na dahil marami sila at effective yung pamamaraan niya, tama sila. Intindihan po natin? May mga ganong pragmatic na mga tao. At anong anong ang sabi po mga kabataan? Is this? Yun ang problem. Kung ganon ang basis natin, therefore. Tama ang iglesia ni Kristo. Tama si Kibuloy kasi mas marami pa sila sa mga Bible believer. At tama yung madaming mga simbahan kung paramihan. O kung sino man yung pinakamarami, yun na pala ang tama. That's the problem. Pragmatism. That's, that's, that is not Bible. That is not truth. These are enemies of the truth. These are conflicting authorities against the truth. You have to take note on that, mga kapatid. And I will end with this, no? I will end with this part, mga kapatid. It is experience. Okay, experience. And dito po, mga kapatid, magikita pa natin isa sa conflicting authorities experience. Ano ang authority ng experience? Ano authority niya? The authority of personal experience. The authority of personal experience. Oh, matagal na ako sa ministry, Brad. Matagal na ako gado, experience na ako. No, no. Kahit gaano ka pa ka-experienceado sa iyo pong buhay. Amen. Pag ang experience mo naman ay kontra sa salita ng Bible or sa salita ng Diyos, it would never make you true. It would never make you right. Because what determines what is right and what is wrong, mga kapatid, is this book. You need to have final authority. Kasi, delikado. Kasi, kung ito ang iyong tatayuan, ako, wala ka na. Mag-end up ka na magiging gnostic, agnostic, mga kapatid. Na mag-end up ka, wala kang stand, wala kang position. At the end of the day, hindi mo alam kung sinong susundin mo. So, you could not be certain na walang absolute sa bagay. Depende po yun sa view po, mga kapatid. Or sabi po nila, it is relativism. Dagdagan ko na isa. Ano pang isa? Relativism. Okay? Magkikita po natin. So relativism po mga kapatid, which is pragmatic relativism. Ano po yun? Depende po yun sa situation. Ang relativism, depende po yun. May truth dito din, may truth dyan. Depende po yun kung sino. So truth is relative. No, the truth is not relative. Truth is absolute po, mga kapatid. Amen. It is not relative to what nation. It is not relative to what race. It's not relative to what ano culture. It is not relative to what ano po, mga kapatid, custom or practice. Truth is truth regardless. Amen. Wherever, even if it cross borders, truth is truth. Amen. Even if it goes to far beyond the country, it, truth is truth. Truth will remain truth. It's not relative to whatever situation po, mga kapatid. A group of people, and what else? Experience. Their final authorities, 
your personal experience. You could be experienced person yet wrong. Yet wrong. As a young preacher, po mga kapatid, I've, I have talked and I have preached to many, by the grace of God, to many churches. And there are really pastors there that are that are very old na sa ministry, very napakatagal na sa ministries po mga kapatid. And sometimes they will approach you and say, what do you think? Why do you think you're right? You're correct. Amen. Ilang taon ka na ba sa ministry? Ilan na ba ang pinagdaanan mo? Sometimes people brag about their their experience. Ba mga kapatid, praise God for those experiences. But it should not replace this book. When your experience will go against the book, believe the book. Obey the book. Hold on to the book and it will never fail you. Mga kapatid, you need to realize that that authority must be one. Amen. Authority must be one and final. And it should be none other else. The monarch of all. Above lahat po yun, mga kapatid. It should be the word of God. And nothing else. Under lahat, lahat, lahat sila po, mga kapatid. It should be the word of God. The authority a person accepts. Amen. It should be one. Because problem will exist when authorities, when there are other authorities and when authorities, two authorities disagree. And it becomes his supreme authority. Madami po, when you get one and you you add it to the word of God, it, they will disagree. And confusion, conflict will come. Only an absolute authority can give you an absolute truth. And all other truth is relative. All other, ano po, all other, I mean, all other authorities, they are relative and they are changeable. And they are not reliable. They are changeable. As if tradition will change, philosophy, as time change, they're changeable. And do not meddle on things that are given to change. But plant your feet on that firm foundation of the word of God and Amen. Stay there. Amen. And have that one authority. And that one authority can, be, can give you an absolute truth. And that's where the word of God. And thank God. Now, careful. Wala pa tayo ngayon. Hindi pa tayo tapos on that introductory part. Magkikita po natin. Next time, titingnan po natin. So here's the infiltration over the scripture. Una, by replacing. Their infiltration is slowly. They, they attempt to replace the authority of the word of God by these man-made authorities. Okay, they try to, to replace that, po, mga kapatid. And unknowingly, it infiltrated to many of our, of our churches, or our families, even ourselves. The way we think, it, it, it is now embedded in our top life, in our education system, and many more, po, mga kapatid. Magkikita po natin. This, that, therefore, Merong conflict ngayon. Merong conflict over the truth. Why? Because these things are attacking the word of God. They attack the word of God. They try to attack the word of God. Why? Why? Because they attempt to replace the word of God. And asino po mga proponents nito? Are those who reject also the authority of the word of God. Brethren, sana may natutunan tayo ngayon. And malalaman nyo anong connection nito sa King James Bible. As we go on ahead, anong connection po nito sa marami pong mga ano po mga kapatid na pag-uusapan natin? Anong connection nito sa mga modern versions? Anong connection nito? So we'll talk about that infiltration. I know you will enjoy this. If you are a, a truth seeker, if you're honest with the word of God, you will enjoy this lesson po mga kapatid. Okay, so this is scheduled every, ano po, every Monday. And I'll see you next Monday. Pagdating po dito sa lesson po na ito, tomorrow, We'll be talking on rightly dividing the word of truth. That's another thing. And so, so Wednesday, uh, that is Christ in the heart of the earth. So Thursday, that is, ano po mga kapatid? That is series of grace and the battlefield of the mind. And um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord sa kanyang goodness sa atin. And thank God po sa kabutihan po ng Panginoon sa atin. Amen. So God bless everyone. And uh, 
and glory to God sa kanya pong pagtuturo sa atin ngayong uh, ano po ngayong ngayong umaga and praise the Lord okay so and thank you din dito kasama natin dito sa Zoom salamat po sa inyong lahat yan dito po amen amen so I'll stop the live streaming thank you sa FB salamat sa FB po na mga brethren natin amen God bless you amen <laughs>